At this point, it is worth slowing down, stopping, thinking. Think about what it is that we have been learning. The notions of covariance and probability are fundamentally connected to the idea of moments of inertia in mechanics. This is, this is really pretty deep. If we think about the inertia matrix for a three-dimensional body, and if we compare that to the covariance matrix for a collection of random variables, there are a lot of structural similarities. There are a lot of similarities in terms of how you use them algebraically. There are even some similarities in notation and terminology, where sometimes the inertia matrix is called the second moment of mass. And the covariance matrix is called the second moment of probability. Hmm, that makes me think. Maybe there are things like uh, first moments. Oh, wait, that is the center of mass or the expectation. Maybe there are things like third moments, fourth moments. Maybe these things are, are some kind of coefficients of something like a Taylor expansion for how mass or probability is distributed. Wow. That's kind of deep. You're going to find that your physical intuition of mass is maybe really useful in understanding probability and vice versa. If you really get covariance of random variables, then you will understand mixed moments of inertia in a very different way. There is so much more that you can learn, but for now, it is bonus time. There is so much more to the story of covariance matrices that I have not told you. For example, there's something called the precision matrix of a random vector. This is the inverse of the covariance matrix. Oh, wow. I never thought to try that. That's a pretty good idea. Oh, and it's pretty useful. This precision matrix is used extensively in data analysis, in machine learning, in all these kinds of things. You're going to see the precision matrix all over the place. Now, this is bonus time. We don't need to know a lot about this, but I will tell you that the off-diagonal entries of the precision matrix are telling you something about conditional independence of random variables. And if you use that precision matrix to generate a quadratic form, this is very deeply related to things in information theory, things called Fisher information. And, oh, there's so much more for us to learn. But, but this is, alas, a brief bonus time. I hope that with the introduction that you have been given to covariance matrices, you are able to launch out and do so much more.